Tra wait, are they gonna open? Oh, they're open. Are they opening with the trailer? This land. I think it's the old one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the old one. Yeah, yeah. We already saw this one. It's pretty cool one actually. Baited. <laughs> yeah, I got baited yeah, hard yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah. The yeah. animation for this is so good. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> sought to end theirs. It is a very, very nice trailer actually. Doing that, it's very nice. Brilliant. Hot. Then gone. Who's hosting? Who do you guys think is hosting? Is it, are we going to see Grouch's beautiful face like immediately, or, or what? Or Colin? I want, I want all of them. Or, I hope Grouch pops out of a cake with yeah. no top on. What? Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? They need me. It's marketing. Okay. Okay. All right, here we go. Oh, it's Ruby. Hi, Tyria. Welcome well, that's quite to quiet. the Guild Wars 2 End of Dragons first look. I'm Ruby Bear, a ArenaNet community manager, and we are all so happy you're here today. We know you've been looking forward to this for a long time, and we have too. With me are our lead content uh, more, designer, more? Andrew Gray, and studio oh. director, Colin Jones. Ah, Hi, guys. Colin. Hey, really excited to be here sharing details about End of Dragons. Hey, Guild Wars community. It's nice to see you all again. It's <laughs> been a little while. It's nice to be back in the chair. Welcome back. Thank you. Oh. Uh, you know, this is a really big day for us. Uh, back when we started development on Guild Wars 1, uh, our very first campaign was Factions in Cantha. Uh, and it was our first ever expansion as a studio. Uh, we were coming off of a big win of shipping our first major live update, Furnace. Soros Furnace, for those of you who remember that. Soros uh, Furnace. And Factions was an incredible prophetic right there. learning opportunity for all of us in the studio. <laughs> uh, we'd never made they an knew. expansion before they as a knew. studio. And so many of the lessons we learned from that expansion really resonate in the way even we still approach expansions today. Uh, it's been 15 years. Doesn't feel like that long. It's been no. 15 years since we first visited. <laughs> Time Canada flies when you don't release any raids. Uh, and it's truly special <laughs> for all of us yep. to finally get a chance to go back there once more. You know, small you know, claim to fame here. If you have a copy of Guild Wars Factions, I can proudly say the screenshots on the back were taken by yours truly. <laughs> nice wow. <work. laughs> yeah, that's right. So in addition to being the setting of our first ever expansion, Cantha was also home to the final story we told in Guild Wars Beyond, the content we created in, in Guild Wars to bridge the gap to Guild Wars 2. That the content, original living story change, was also the last piece of content I personally got to work on. Epic. Guild Wars 2. It is so very it epic. Set the scene for art. Guild Wars 2, of course, but to today, an extent, and we're certainly with the about systems. End of Dragons. Basically, from the day we announced Guild Wars 2, and it was hard as hell. Can't the win. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I remember right around launch. Uh, they saved it for a rainy day. Creator Matt Visual uh, and uh, the entire interview, he just kept saying Cantha and staring at me <laughs> over and over again, <laughs> waiting for me to twitch or give away anything whatsoever <clears throat> that would give a hint as to when Cantha was coming. And I remember Dan Howell just straight up hounding me to oh, say Cantha confirmed during a live stream. <laughs> Yeah. That's right. Well, Matt, Dan, and all of you who wondered about Cantha, today is your lucky day. We promised you a tidal wave of information tidal for End of Dragons, wave. and we are ready to deliver that. Music's on tidal again. members of the End of Dragons development team joining Hope us throughout not. the rest of the show, <laughs> and this is only the beginning. Today is just your first look. Yeah. We're going to be giving you more details on everything we announced today leading up to the launch of End of Dragons. We also don't want to spoil everything. We're going to save lots of things for you to discover for yourself when End of Dragons launches in early 2022. Ooh. So let's start your first look right Ooh. now with the brand new End of Dragons trailer. Oh, we are going Here to get a trailer. Here we go. Here we go. NC Soft. Uh-oh. NC God. There's familiarity in this strangeness. Like a song half remembered, a tune without words to carry it. Orin gameplay. I know you, and yet Orin I don't. Uh, you are Orin in the x -Pack. Who are you talking to? Just an echo in the mist. Kantha. A possibility. Look around us. Ooh. Your children would be trapped in the past if not for me. Their worlds are carved from the jade that I gave purpose. I promised them a future. A century of progress cannot end this way. I'm not... Cantha's not just a spoke in some grand cosmic wheel. There's underwater! Uh oh would a great innovator a fishing boat so fishing boat confirmed future. there's a char there as well there's a fish i'll find a way to save us all Ooh. where's the baby where, where? oh no she's looking thin <laughs> bounce back
back, Soja. You go, girl. This looks so good. That, I, okay, I mean, that, visuals are good. It's visually very good, but that really doesn't say that much, right? Like, who are all these characters, actually? What is this green stuff? We've got the Jade. is out there. What are we waiting for? She harnessed. Okay. Well, I have a theory. What's the theory? The cycle is reborn. Okay. So she's Ministry of Purity leader. And she harnessed the power of the magic that was in the Jade Sea. We hope to, you liked the new trailer. Like, if you're not make already, some hyper tell us in chat what you think. Stuff. There's a lot in there for everyone to go back and dig through and find. And we encourage you to go rewatch the trailer after the show and see what else you can discover. Who were those Aether Blades that were back there? Evidently. And who was that mysterious Asura that was next to Anka? Could it be the replacement for the uh, untimely death to Horik? <laughs> so we got to see the what trailer, baby. and I'm excited for them to find <laughs> Could it be? But that is just the beginning of today's reveals. The first area of End of Dragons oh. we're going to take a look oh. at Elite is a facts. slightly deeper look into the story, the setting, oh. and the world. The story. Something I'm really proud of in End of Dragons is how closely the narrative and design team work together to shape the themes and the story of the expansion. Yeah. The gameplay and the narrative truly complement one another. They do. So let's hear from some of those developers on the narrative and design teams let's about go. the story and the setting of Cantha. Story at End of Dragons. Hit me. End of Dragons is the culmination of so much of what we've been doing in All the, of the dragons story that did. up until this point. We have a lot of really compelling open story threads that we've uh, built up over the years, and we're going to pay off a lot of them in End of Dragons. And I think players should be excited about how we've weaved all these different interpersonal oh, no. stories. Oh no, timey leaked! The great cosmological Time questions still of oh, no. into some satisfying payoffs that I think they'll really enjoy. Last time we were in Cantha was for the Winds of Change uh, content pack for Guild Wars 1. Um, and what we basically saw was there is a lot of lingering uh, consequences of, the, of Shiro's rise. And we teamed up with this group, the Ministry of Purity, in order to try to purify the region. Oh, they didn't stop you were right, trying Nike. to purify like disease. Ministry they started of Purity. trying to kick out everybody else who didn't fit with their ideal image of wow. what they what they wanted. Sounds to be a little like. fashy. Yeah, 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 a little, little the fashy the there. Yeah, they're going and for it. They're going to go big on it. That's where we left things. So it's easy to imagine that because Cantha was closed off, that they would become a time capsule. However, they have been affected by the same events that have been affecting the rest of Tyria. The rise of Zaitan, the death of Balthazar, Those all of these others. things have had just as much of an effect on Cantha as they have had on the rest of the world. We actually, as a team, fairly early on, made a timeline of all the major events that happened in the world and how they would have affected Cantha in order to try to figure out how this world would have been shaped over time. Uh, longtime fans who really loved Cantha and Guild Wars 1 are gonna find a ton to love. And n frankly, new players uh, might have their minds blown a little bit. Wow. It wouldn't be Guild Wars 2, it wouldn't be the story of the commander without the Vazberg. commander's um, Yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna lose engorged. it. We yeah, find he is gonna be engorged. We lost. with Marjorie and Kazmir. I think anybody who really misses Jory the detective is in for a treat. The most important familiar face that's going to be uh, accompanying us on our journey into Cantha is Aureen. Ooh. Aureen's story has become sort of the spine of the Guild Wars 2 story. Aureen is constantly grappling with her responsibility and how much she needs to do, and her trying and then the to end of Dragons, that out end of Aureen is going as to well. have repercussions for the entire world. In this expansion, we have really breathed life into every corner of the world that we could. You know, there are so many little moments throughout the world, moments that touch you, Ooh, moments that make story you laugh, moments scenes. that make you cry. I you like know, that. This, this team is so good, That's at, good at just bringing emotions to the surface. What I'm most proud about is how we were able to really craft a story that very elegantly blends the gameplay elements that I think Guild Wars 2 is really strong at with oh, oh. a story that just keeps a 
really frenetic pace. Oh wow! And Looks lets like you some really good production, actually. Like they're actually going to commit to kind of really blending cool it in moments. with the game plan, like making cutscenes. There, there are, are so big, many so. things. That's Pog, actually. That is big. That is fucking big. For the story of End of Dragon, there's honestly uh, could be one, two, just from a design the, the perspective. The best Guild Wars Two expansion. We have so much technology that is in the production. We have so much technology that is improved or has been entirely new. The best Guild Wars Two expansion. We have so much technology that is improved or has been entirely new since the last time we made an expansion, and as a result. This expansion has some really unique, cool set pieces that I think are going to blow people's minds. Voices of the game. Ah, oh, yes. Hello, I'm Erica Ishii, and I play June in End of Dragons. Oh. Wait, was that it? Wait, wait, what? Like Connor said, Wait, what? the story what? in End of Dragons is a culmination of a lot of long-running story threads, from stories that like began a, like a one years line ago, that? all the way up to stories and events that you took part in over the past year. And what he said about building a timeline for Cantha was 100% true. Yeah. Uh, I guess somebody who loves the world building part of the job, like it was a great experience to sit down. We with don't even know who that character and is. And like sort of plot out the last hundred or so messages. years of like, the history of an empire. Right? Yeah, yeah. it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, one of our goals with this expansion is to create a world and story that's familiar and exciting to those of you who remember Cantha from Factions, but also mm. accessible and equally exciting to those of you who are visiting it for yes, the first time. Yes, yes, good. And we cannot wait for all of you to step into this new Cantha. Nick Hernandez and Ali B are up next to tell you about map and content design. Ooh, let's when go. When we started designing End let's of go. Dragons, we wanted to incorporate the verticality that yes. Heart of Thorns Ooh. brought, and we wanted to lean into the freedom oh, of wow. movement from Path of Fire. Also. Okay. So let's take a look. It, they're doing it. They're doing the hybrid expansion. They're doing the best of both. Hang on. My name is Ali B. Um, I'm one of our senior content designers, and I work primarily in our open world area. Mm. Um, my name is Nick Hernandez. Uh, I am a game designer here at ArenaNet, and I am a content designer for the Xingj map. So fans can expect from the end of Dragon maps to kind of really feel something new and different that they haven't experienced before. With End of Dragons, things are a bit more differentiated between each of the maps, and each of them has their own unique feel. For Shun Jay specifically, tried our best to make uh, content that hits on all gameplay types, right? Oh. Think of it like a mean? vacation island. It's, it's like this beautiful, serene, spiritual, uh, spacious <laughs> uh, locale that feels both peaceful and not, right? Depending on where you are and what's going on. Um, so some of the highlights of the Echavald map are definitely those gargantuan trees, uh, the lake, uh, the rivers forest. that kind of pour into the lake, oh, where baby. you kind of have Here these we go. Uh, underground rivulets and stuff like that, where the player can kind of traverse through there. Definitely those gargantuan trees kind of give you that verticality and freedom Ooh. of movement we talked about before. So if you've no, got a sky scale, that's going to feel Yeah, you can really use cool. mounds and stuff, guys, obviously. So yeah. Cantha is and definitely gliding. not the same as it was in Guild Wars 1. What you have to remember yeah, is you that can't it's jump been in Guild 250 Wars 1. years. So it's so not the same. How has that area evolved? What's the geography like now? Are the trees still petrified? Like, what's what's kind of going on with that? Um, as well as the people, right? So the people who were there 250 years ago might not be the same people, um, but there are definitely some familiar buildings and structures. So what players can find, or will find, uh, with Jing Jay is that it is topographically different than it used to be, but not to a point where there aren't familiar tones. The thing I'm most excited for when we finally get to release End of Dragons is just seeing how players feel about the maps in and of themselves. I would uh -huh. love to see how people feel about all of the work that's been put into the world and the world narrative and, you know, how that gameplay and those stories make people feel um, and just get reception on what they think of it. I think that's going to be really exciting. Ooh. Well, that didn't really say anything, but I like it. Oh, another voice. Wait, are we going to get another one line? Are you guys ready? Hey everybody, I'm Noshida Lal. You'll be hearing me as Detective Rama in Guild Wars 2 and of Dragons. Yep. yep, there it is. One line. I love it. Awesome stuff. We hope you enjoyed okay. the preview <laughs> of Xing Jie and Echo Vault, how the game and game world are different now, and how those changes affect map and content design. And that's just two of the maps. Yeah. When we sat down. Wow, to they, are they only going to say about two maps? Content, we kept replayability in okay. the forefront of our minds. We want all the End of Dragons Tell us how many. He said all. Yeah, yeah, I want it. Ooh. Yeah, they reflect the history that so many, many? Of are familiar with. How can't the changed while it was isolated? The beauty of the game world and it's so many things that Guild Wars 2, <laughs> Two has maps to offer. Confirmed. And like Ali mentioned, these maps are tons of fun to explore and they're especially fun to explore on your mounts. Tell me about events. Speaking of mounts. 
Oh, uh, here's another end of oh, Dragon's no. preview for you. Oh, oh boy! Oh, here we go! Yes. Here we go! <laughs> oh my God! Wait, turtle. Siege Turtle Mount. I'm Kirk Williford. I'm a senior game designer at ArenaNet and a team lead on End of Dragons. Are you kidding me? Uh, my name is Brian Walter. <laughs> I'm an animator here at ArenaNet. So Siege Turtle is one of the most iconic and memorable creatures from Guild Wars I don't believe it. So when we first talked they about it, they are very pogged. Yeah, I love to see it. Turtle immediately made it on the list, and the team quickly. Oh, got look at that! It's got laser it. cannons Mounts on it. Mounts are a defining feature in Guild Fuck Wars yeah. 2, and with End of Dragons, we wanted to continue that tradition. So the Siege Turtle is our first multiplayer co-op. One person's mount. a gunner. Multi one person's a driver. Yes. Wait, what? You're you gonna be like a turtle gunner? Multi-person mount. What is this even? Perfect opportunity to bring new players into the game. It sounds like a race. Oh, so they can just ride on the back. They don't need mounts previously to enjoy oh. the sea oh, turtle. So you can pop up your mentor tag and they can jump on the back of your turtle. Oh, that's big. You can show them around the maps. Peepo carrier. Yeah, yeah. It's actually a because peepo carrier. Guild Wars mounts, we really put a lot of care and research into getting their behaviors to feel Ooh. believable and alive. I spent months watching turtle videos while prototyping. <laughs> turtle um, videos. He's a turtle. he's a turtle enthusiast. Um, he is a turtle enjoyer. Walking, he's walking. He's big into sprinting. it. Sprinting turtles. Dude, how big is this thing? Of it. I've seen them. So my favorite thing You're to animate to block on NPCs turtle with this. was just the simple walk animation. It really got me into the mentality. I hope we get a, a, a baby turtle, turtle watching these grow giant it turtles into full and how they walk size, and what their foot the placements are. Line. If you actually toggle the walk animation, we can have a little baby game, turtle fall. It kind of maps out to more or less a turtle's walk speed. I actually did the calculations, and it was like, oh my gosh, that's like the exact speed. Perfect, I nailed it. <laughs> When you think of turtles, you don't really think that this guy's he's so done getting this thing to he's run done the calculations on the turtle, dude. In a rewarding way, he ran was, the numbers. Uh, an awesome challenge. He is a turtle. Man. The Siege Turtle is a personal favorite of mine, and I am incredibly excited to see players be able oh, to hop on well, one for I, the first I, I, time. I kind of really experience what, what the is power even and be, awesomeness dude? that is the I'm Siege actually turtle. really surprised they added a new mount. Like I wasn't expecting that because I thought mounts are going to be POF yeah, only. Either. Yeah, yeah, same. Oh, voice actor number three. Hey, I'm Tina Wong, and I play Empress Yin and uh, Calidris and Akane and Tengu Reporter and all sorts of other Tengu kind of characters Reporter. that you might meet later down the road in the expansion of Guild Wars 2. Tengu and Tengu race Wow, first. she got loads more time. She's loads of characters. Nice. It's the really Siege Turtle as a two-person co-op mount is something oh. we're so eager for you to experience in End of Dragons. Gameplay? I remember several years ago, we had a company-wide meeting to brainstorm what we wanted for the next expansion, and Siege Turtles was one of the very first things called out. We all knew that they needed to be part of Kantha in Guild Wars 2. As a loyal member of the Luxon Armada, Wrong! I Luxon agree. suck. I mean, and I don't know, wasn't you kidding when he not, said that not be Luxon if you're into Turtles, though, Nike. participate in the fun. Uh, you I mean, also may have noticed that Siege Turtle looked a little, little more high-tech compared Kurzik. to last time. A little more tricked out. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's actually a common thread in Kantha. Uh, we're going to be telling you more about that. And in fact, there's going to be a, uh article about Dragon Jade technology on our website later oh. today. Oh. Yeah. So the Siege Turtle isn't the only new method of transportation coming. Kirk still has more to share, so let's see what else he has to tell you all. Give me details. Fit. Oh, oh, oh no. Boy. Fishing. Oh I'm Kirk Wolford, my goodness. I'm a senior game designer oh, at no. Arena, and I'm a team lead on End of Dragons. We've been wanting to put fishing in Guild Wars 2 for as long as it's been around. Wait, really? It just always came down to finding the best time and place. I don't believe it. Is when it really we the mastery? fishing for Guild Wars 2, we looked at our own personal experiences going fishing and found what was the most memorable. And for me, when I went fishing as a kid, I went with my family. And so when we bring that into Guild Wars 2, we wanted to think about how can we make that a multiplayer experience. Oh, you can fish off docks, fishing? or we've created Most skips which allow you to fish around the waters of Tyria <laughs> by taking your fishing boat and exploring what? with your friends. Dude! Like we wanted the waters of Tyria to feel as authentic as we could <laughs> nice. and most lifelike as we could to a real fishing experience. And so there are hundreds of different fish for you to discover. A in, real fishing in experience. So you basically get there drunk so and don't many catch that anything. Have been added to the game, and kudos to that first person who finds all of them. Wait, there's actually like, uh, wait, there's a hundred the fish? Including the common goldfish, as well as the most notorious uh, catfish in Ascalon, Old Whiskers. Old End of Whiskers? Dragons has five notorious catfish. Tracks, I think uh, including the Nike knows turtle, something about notorious skips, catfishes. And I fishing. Mean, plenty of people in this community Each have been with catfished. their own levels of progression for players to discover as they explore Kantha. Ooh, yeah, the boat looks kind of fun, I excited about though. the release of End of Dragons for players to really be able to come together and experience the world that we've been creating in Kantha. We've all wanted to go to Kantha for the longest time, and the team has done such a great job bringing it to life. And I just can't wait for players to see mm. it. I have to say, fishing is a weird choice of a... Of a I guess that's the mastery. 
it's a weird choice, I think. I'm not not sure about that one. It's super weird that I'm they're showing these voice actors voice, yeah, when we have no context. Mostly friendly, agender, engineer. It's weird. Yeah, because we don't know who these characters are, because we don't know the story, right? So, like, who the hell are these like people? Like <laughs> said, we've been wanting to add fishing for a long time, and we're really happy with how it's shaping up in End of Dragons. The multiplayer aspects, over, over 200 different two? kinds of fish, and the ability hmm. to fish That's a lot of mastery docks, or a lot shore, of uh, or skips. achievement points, I'm guessing. Skips, by the way, are another of the five new mastery tracks that Kirk oh. mentioned, along with Siege Turtles. Sea Going shadows? out with your party and fishing is, it, is just a ton of fun. You're able to anchor your boat and then just walk around. You could go fishing, obviously, but you can also dance. You could play <laughs> sea shanties with your instruments. Ooh, he's if not you didn't selling catch it. it. Fishing is not restricted to Canva. You could fish oh. all over Tyria, and if you oh. want to catch every fish in a game, you need to kind of go on a, a full world tour of fishing. World tour of fishing. I think there's going to be fishing tournaments. Uh, well, more details time. in these mastery lines, as well as the remaining two yeah, unannounced lines them. between now and the end of uh, end of Dragon's launch. For our next look at End of Dragons, let's see some legendaries that will come oh, with the expansion. Legendaries. Oh, legendaries! Ooh, let's go. here we go. Here we go, Gen 3s. I'm ready to pump. I'm Chelsea Mills, and I'm a senior prop artist. Ooh. In End of Dragons, we're introducing 16 new legendary weapons, all available on release Oh, day. it's like a lance This thing. set of legendaries is inspired by the Elder Dragon, Areen, who plays a significant role in the End of oh. Dragons story. Wait, they're not all themed the same from way, right? From our perspective, we wanted they the legendaries to show Areen's oh, no, 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 no. from the first time you meet no, her they as better not all be themed that way. So now, all grown up as our Get own ready. Elder Dragon. The precursors represent baby Areen, while the legendaries represent adult Areen. Irene is one of my favorite Aura's characters, nice. and I'm so yeah, happy good that Aura, we got yeah. to create a legendary set based on her. I can't wait to see players running wait, around show more than one. the legendaries. Wait, wait. Show, show more than one. Oh, we get the great sword. Wait, all the, it's the only no, 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 great sword. Not, nah, there is no way they're all the same. No. They must have been no. Oh, no. And they only show the, the same swords. theme. I'm so excited that oh, you guys get to be acquainted with her. How different could they be? These 16 new Orin style legendaries are all going to be available on End of Dragons launch, launch day. And if you want a head start, you can earn a voucher for one of the precursors Chelsea talked about with the current Return to Living World achievements. And we'll talk a little more about oh, that no. later. I they should not have showed anyone one there. Why did they not show them? more than one? I, I, I'm Orin's champion. Like, I should have legendaries that make me look the part. I'm Orin's champion. Well, that's debatable. <laughs> We're all Orin's champion. <laughs> so, oh, next up, here's Cameron Rich to ah. talk about strike missions and encounters. Ooh, strike gameplay and encounters. Hmm, let's see what this means. Hi, I am Cameron Rich. Positive vibes only. Good shirt. Arena, like it. And I act as the lead for the encounters team. For End of Dragons strike missions, we're taking some epic encounters from the story of End of yes, Dragons. Yes, yes. And we're creating really awesome, challenging 10-man oh. versions of those well, encounters for you to enjoy. You better mean that, buddy. For End of Dragons strike missions, we're doing something new in that we're adding yes. challenge mode difficulty yes. to each strike mission yes. to release with End of Dragons. These challenge modes will be enabled shortly after launch, and they are designed to give our hardcore players, our yes, Destiny Raiders, uh, something to really sink their teeth into. Yeah. <laughs> In addition to the challenge modes, we're also going to be revamping our reward system oh, for strike yes. missions oh to simplify God. and standardize them. Oh my God. Game. <laughs> Within of Dragons, creatures and combatants, we're yes. taking a little bit of Cameron. a different approach with design. Oh, One of the common problems yeah. that we're trying to address is coming across a creature that's of a high rank that Ooh. feels like it just has a bunch more health and a bunch more oh, damage. Yeah, I like that. So instead, this time around, uh, you'll see creatures unlock new abilities as they increase yeah, in rank. Yeah, that is so very good. if you find good. a creature on the field that's a veteran, you might be using one set of skills. Oh. And if you come across it again and it's an elite that or is champion, good it'll have unlocked some new skills along the way that will hopefully and test it's, it's you over. and your strengths Shut it down. as a player. We don't need to hit anything else, guys. I am really, really that's excited it. for fans huge. to get their hands on the strike yeah. missions for End of Dragons uh, because there's a lot of surprises that we've been oh. able to put into the design. Lots of opportunity to let's work go. together with your friends to overcome some really epic bosses. Let's go. Let's fucking go, dude. More voice acting. Let's go. Oh, get, what do you got for me? Hit, hit it hard. Hi, my name's EK. I play oh, Gorik, and as you know, he's the best. Gorik. And I'm happy to be a part of the cast for End of Dragons. Looking forward Ooh. to it. We know how many of you are looking forward to taking on some new challenges, and we can't wait to see you tackle these new encounters. You'll find additional challenge modes and improved rewards. 
Very what nice. you just saw was a sneak peek at some of the maps for the strike missions. Oh. We can't show you the bosses or the fights quite yet, as it would be a huge story spoiler. So we look forward to when you discover them in the I expansion. I like the approach there, reusing and story. You, you can, ah, and you can expect <laughs> challenge mode to live up to the name. Cam and his team are doing an amazing job creating oh, the you better, challenging Oh, you better mean content. that, buddy. All of the fights are a ton of fun. They're probably some of my favorite things in the expansion. They are super good. We're also going to meet some familiar enemies from Guild Wars factions, like Naga, Kappa, Kappa and Wallows, Kappas. all updated for Guild Wars 2. Reimagining these familiar armies in Guild Wars 2 was an exciting challenge, and I'm super pleased with the results. The team is also revisiting how we, do, uh, how we work at scaling creatures, so instead of just you know getting a bunch of health, they actually get new abilities as they level up. Ooh, that, that actually does sound like a lot of fun. Could make so, Overboard very um, big. Andrew, why don't you tell us who we're going to hear from next? You're going to hear from past me about guild halls. <laughs> Wait, guild halls? Whoa, that is a bit of new. Ooh, guild hall. Tell me about features, though. My name is Andrew Gray. I'm the content design lead on Guild Wars 2. I did not so one of the coolest this. things about the guild hall is the location we chose. Is the fact it that is we some forgot fine it. beachfront property in the old Xingjie Arena. Ooh, that, that was, was one of the most man. beautiful maps in the that original game, uh, and it's even more beautiful in Guild Wars 2. And it also has a lot of historical relevance because it was the location that the original leader of the Ministry of Purity was defeated at the end of Winds of Change. Guild acquisition works similarly to other guild halls in that you go on an expedition. Uh, we did build the expedition a little bit differently this time, though, where we focused more on uh, smaller encounters. We made, uh, you know, scaling a, a big cornerstone of it so that even if you're in with a small group, you can go in there and you can defeat it. It's a lot more encounter focused, so you're, you know, fighting individual bosses versus like, Wow, that's a lot of enemies on the screen. Okay. So my favorite highlight is the amount of water in the space. Uh, we deliberately chose an island because we wanted it to pair really well with skiffs and fishing, and it, it oh, really worked fish out in well. in your own um, guild hall. It's just a ton of fun to go around with your guildies this going around on so a little good. fishing trips in your, in your guild hall, like without having to leave in the comfort of your own guild hall. Um, and then also there's a really large guild arena that's right there on the beach. Oh. So if you're into like Mai Tai fueled guild battles, like this is the guild hall for you. The My favorite part about building balance. the guild hall was honestly just spending time in the area. It felt like I was going on vacation every day because it's so beautiful. Uh, but beyond that, uh, when we built the expedition, we, we decided to build one with a little bit more of a story behind it. Uh, you, oh. have, you have some familiar characters there, both existing friends and some that you meet along in the dragons that, that add a little bit more personality when to the acquisition process. When you talk features, though, like, are they I, I fixing Guildhall really really features or what? I'm most excited to see uh, how guild decorators use this space, honestly. Um, I'm always blown away at the uh, amount of creativity, the crazy things that they're able to build in guild halls. And when we built this one, we specifically had them in mind. We wanted to leave lots of space for them to be able to build all of their crazy adventures in there. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to see not, you know, what they do with the space that we've made for them. Mm, not a lot of feature. Uh, mm, yeah, not sure about that one. They didn't really say anything about, uh, if they're just adding a guild hall and not Sarah increasing Skulovich, features. And I am the voice mm, of Anka in not not great. Dragons. Did she say Anika? Wait, another voice. Oh, we got two in a row this time. The double, the transition is Hi, increasing. Hi, and I play Captain Mai Trin in the Aether Blade Armada in Ooh. Guild Wars 2. End Wait a of second. Mai Trin is My back. Trin. Good work, past Andrew. Thank you. Thank you for sharing all of this and getting players ready for their new Canton Guild Hall. I cannot stress how beautiful this map is. It's we actually so had somebody return to the company, Darren Claypool, of yeah. the Township of Claypool fame. Yeah. He came back, and the work he did on this map is just phenomenal. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So at this point, you're probably yes. wondering what's next yes. for elite specializations. Yes. We haven't talked about those quite yet. So thank you for hanging in I there. Was Andrew, that. I, I, I was wondering. I was. So elite specializations offer players a fundamentally new give way us the to leaks. experience Hand them over. They give players access to new play styles by changing their professions, core mechanics, and unlocking new weapon and utility skills. Our elite specializations for End of Dragons are heavily inspired by Kantha. We dug into some deep lore. Uh, to deep lore? That's my favorite kind. We've also broken a lot <laughs> of the rules deep. with profession and elite specializations. Oh, wait, they've broken the design. rules? And I think players are going to really enjoy Wait, that might be a bit scary. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's so good or not. So today we're going to give you an overview of the core mechanic changes and oh, weapon and utility skills. Oh, that's more than I thought, actually. Oh, wow, that's a lot more a than I thought. Ago. Afterwards, I'll be joined live by a few members of our development team to talk about what's coming next oh, let's for go. Guild Wars 2 in 2021, give Ladies. you our beta dates, and oh, wrap up today's show. Beta dates? Oh, shit. The virtue. Oh, oh, that's Mesmer, right? Probably. It has to be. Oh, here we go. Hi, everyone. I'm Carl McLean, a senior combat designer working on elite specializations for End of Dragons. 
We're here today to preview some of the abilities for the upcoming Mesmer Elite Specialization, The Virtuoso. Let's jump right into it. Ooh. Dagger, I think. That's Dagger, I believe. To begin, let's briefly cover the profession mechanic changes. From the start, you will no longer have access to clones. Oh! Instead of creating clones, oh, hang on. the Virtuoso will stock a blade on themselves for use with their blade song profession abilities. Phantasms will still initialize, but will stock a blade instead of creating a clone when they finish with their action. Ooh. We'll have some brief demonstrations of different ways to gain blades during this preview. Now, let's go look at the Virtuoso's weapon, the dagger. Dagger? The first skill for the Virtuoso's dagger is a consistent projectile attack called Range Flying dagger. Cutter. Instead of a payout of a three auto attack chain, any target struck by three of the projectiles it launches will receive multiple additional attacks on the third impact. Hmm. The second skill of this weapon is Blade Call. This ability spreads daggers which pause at their ending point or wherever they collide with terrain, and then return to the Virtuoso for a second attack. If the blades strike an enemy during this ability, you'll stock a blade for your profession abilities. Here you can see a blade stocked This, by the way, left shoulder. the no clones is big for World Bus as well. Makes it very right playable, because clones are useless in World Bus as well. This is actually very smart design, I think, from Aina here. Unstable Blade Storm is the third ability, dealing pulsing damage along its path and hurling blades at enemies within its reach. Ooh. It's kind of like a lightning okay. storm. Okay, let's what? use some of these stocked blades we've accumulated. Yeah, what are these blade abilities? Blade Song Harmony is the Virtuoso's most accessible blade song, expending each stocked blade separately oh. over a period of time that deals damage to your target enemy. Some pretty big numbers there, blade guys. Blade Song Sorrow. Each of your stocked blades readies itself then launches toward your targeted enemy to strike them simultaneously Ooh. while inflicting confusion. All right, all right. Actually, we'll the, rebuild a few of our blades this after this by switching to a this great doesn't sword, look then busted, using actually, and Phantasmal Berserker. In terms of the design, have they done it? Blade Song Dissonance. Combine all your blades into a single strike. Whoa, well, Defiance enemies. Break tooltip, by the way, guys. Tooltip Defiance Break. We'll regain a full set of blades by using the utility skill Blade Renewal. Wait, uh, Blade Turn Requiem distortion on will block for a short okay. time and deal damage to nearby enemies based on the number of blades <laughs> stocked. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. It's full counter, but more busted. Yeah, uh, yep, okay, okay, I may have spoken too soon. Your is called Twin Blade Restoration, <laughs> which throws daggers at enemies and grants bonus effects if you hit foes with them. Big boons, boons. As covered before, Blade Renewal will grant distortion and fully stock all blades that can be used differently Renewed for focus, each of the Renewed focus, but it's blades. not elite, Pog. <laughs> Reign of Blades <laughs> drops daggers on foes for its duration, punishing enemies that remain in its area. Oh, that's a yeah, cool animation. That, looks that is awesome. Oh, that is cool. I love it. Sword of Decimation is a single impact Four in second area to strategically nice. immobilize enemies. Oh, that's got a pretty big telegraph. Oh, actually, dude, that's a fucking good skill. Holy shit. I think they actually thought about... I think this is World vs. World, Psychic actually. Psychic Force is an area attack around the Virtuoso that pushes enemies away. And finally, Thousand Cuts as your elite skill is a fire and forget line-based damage. damaging just, just ability that 11 requires K tool to damage in its narrow path for full effectiveness. Ooh. So there you have each of the abilities that the Virtuoso can harness for the expansion. We'll cover the traits another time. We're excited to see how the daggers fly when you oh, get your hand on this early traits, specialization. Dude, no I've traits, been Carl McLean, and on behalf of Arena yeah. and the skills team, thank oh. you, and we'll see you again soon. I, you know what? Okay, I actually want to praise that. I actually think that's not that bust in terms of the design, right? I think the design there is actually not that OP. There's some very good skills, obviously. There, by the looks of that, like the numbers look pretty good, but it doesn't actually look Omega busted uh, in terms of the way it's designed. It's not like Mirage, right? Hey, everybody, it's oh, Debbie no. Derryberry, no. the oh, voice no. of no! Tiny, no! your favorite, my favorite. We're so <laughs> excited to be coming back for End of Dragons. Oh, there's so much I want to tell you. So great. See you there. Okay, Timey. Andrew has headed back to keep working on End of Dragons for all of you. Colin has rejoined me, and uh, Drouch! Uh, uh, the big man! Well. Uh, thanks, Ruby. Uh, hello, everybody. It's been a minute. Uh, it's great to be back <laughs> at the studio again, uh, just in time to crash this live stream, and, you know, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> Thank you for crashing. Welcome back. Thank you. So, Grouch is activated. So? Yeah, so, uh, like Tell us about mentioned e before, we've broken a lot of our pre-existing design constraints and rules around elite specializations with End of Dragons, oh, oh. Uh, which I think is going to be pretty interesting overall. Uh, I think the fact that the Virtuo doesn't have a clone mechanic, uh, which has been a staple of Mesmer gameplay since release, is a bit of a testament to this. Uh, you know, for me, Virtuoso feels like an entirely new profession, and I think you're going to see a similar design approach with all oh, the other elite oh, specializations. I like that. Let's go big. 
we can't wait to tell you more no about rules. those elite specializations throughout Only the one? rest of 2021. Only one? Along with other End of Dragons features what that we mentioned today, like those other two mastery tracks. We got off to a great start. We got to share so many things about the expansion. Colleen, you want to give us a quick recap? I would love to recap. That <laughs> Ten <one>. seconds. <laughs> All right. Uh, so what have we heard about? Canthan region. We've got a storyline. Yes. Mysterious Dragon J technology. Creatures and masteries. New elite specializations. and boys. New strikes, each with their own challenge mode. A new Canthan guild hall. Fishing and fishing boats. We're calling those skiffs. And two-player mounts. This is the first time we're Big adding features. multiplayer mounts to Guild Wars 2. And one of the things I'm most excited about th about this expansion is it draws on some of the best elements and lessons from our previous two expansions. Uh, for story, we looked at some of the best things that we did in Heart of Thorns and Path of Fire, and then we brought that approach into End of Dragons, and I think it's the best story we've done yet. And then we, at, we looked at replay value. Uh, and you know, Heart of Thorns, uh, one of the big things that we've seen comments from our players about Heart of Thorns was they love the amount of replay value that expansion mm -hmm. added to the game. Uh, and so we've really invested in this expansion. Yeah, in meta events, uh, you they know, listen. Strikes, having they challenge know. modes, they know. having a full set of legendary weapons. Uh, I like this. On launch day, day one, uh, there's a lot of replay value, and this is about an expansion that you can play for a long time. And we Let's realize go. it's very important to our players. Let's fucking go. Uh, we also wanted to have game systems that impact not just the expansion, but the entire game. Uh, and really to look at the game deeply and systemically as a whole, the way we've done with gliding and with mounts and other expansions. Um, and so with End of Dragons, if you look at the uh, multiplayer mounts, that is an investment in us saying, hey, Path of Fire had mounts. We're going to try having multiplayer mounts with the turtle. Interesting. And that's really exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, fishing and multiplayer fishing with skiffs is a game-wide experience that you can have. And I think that's really exciting, too. Uh, our mysterious dragon jade technology, you'll find out more about that someday, also has had this approach applied to it. Ooh, that scares uh, and me a bit. there's two other really big things that we're working on that I'm really I'm feeling Ice Brood Saga Master is kicking in. For our World versus World players, Alliance oh, is a here major we go. feature that folks have been waiting for for a long time. Cornerstone game mode, by the way. And it comes in our End of Dragons time frame, and it's a big thing that we know is about systemically approaching um, ways to improve the game forever for our players. Uh, and then the other big one we're investing in is our technology. And by uh, investing in taking the game from DX9 to DX11, and a lot of the things that eventually will come with that, we really want to invest in holistically, how do we make Guild Wars a better game? Not just with this expansion, but for the future. Ooh. Uh, as a final note it's for not me, the end of the world, uh, though this expansion is named Ooh. End of Dragons, yeah, here we I want go. to be abundantly clear, yeah. <laughs> this is not the end of Guild Wars 2. Uh, we view End of Dragons <laughs> as the next big stepping stone for this franchise. They said it. They said it. And we think the best they is They should have said it. Well, it's not uh, the end of development. Okay, more they missed a trick there. End of Dragons and Guild Wars 2. Guild uh, Wars 2 reborn. We're not going to tell you about any of it today, uh, but we're very excited for you all to get to check it out someday. But we do have lots for you to, to pass the time between now and the launch of mm -hmm. End of Dragons. Ah. Josh, you're up. Yes, thank you. Uh, and we've got a lot to go through, so please bear with me. <laughs> yes. uh, so uh, first, in case you've been living under a rock, um, I do want to bring attention to the Living World Returns campaign, which is taking players back to Living World Seasons 2, yes, 3, 4, the and content. the Ice Brute Saga. Uh, the if legendary. you're tuning into Guild yes. Wars 2 for the first time yes. in a long while, you're going to want to listen closely to this. Uh, so here's how it works. Each Living World episode is available for free during its Spotlight Week, and all you need to do to claim that episode is log in. Uh, season 3, Episode 5 is in the spotlight starting today, and Season 4 is going to kick off later next month. And just to reiterate, this is a perfect time for veterans and new players to get caught mm. up on the story in preparation for End of Dragons. Each episode has new achievements available, and completing those achievements is going to bring you closer to two fairly big rewards. Uh, like Ruby mentioned earlier, precursor. you can earn a voucher for an End of Dragons precursor weapon, which is going to give you a head start on earning one of those orine inspired legendaries that Chelsea showed us earlier. And if you complete the full meta achievement for Living World Returns, you'll be rewarded with a legendary amulet, which yes. will fit quite nicely into your uh, legendary armory. It better be toggleable, uh, Josh. noting that these achievements are permanent, so uh, if this is the first time you're hearing about it, don't worry, you can still jump in a little bit late and catch up on all this content before the release of End of Dragons uh, next year. Um, but while we're talking about the near future, I'd also like to remind folks that we have the World Boss Rush bonus event kicking off later today. Uh, in that event, you can take out world bosses, uh, which will progress a community goal Get a chunk. and unlock new tiers of rewards for everybody. Uh, and there's more details on that event on the GuildWars2.com blog. I believe that was Tell me something yesterday. Uh, so like Colin mentioned earlier, uh, we've also got alliances uh, rolling yes. into beta later on this summer. When? Uh, for anyone who's tuning in who's not familiar with the feature, alliances is designed to deliver a more balanced world versus world experience by dynamically creating matchups using guilds, uh, alliances, which is basically a player-managed collection of guilds, and active world versus world players. Uh, this is very different from the current system uh, that we've been using for a number of years that relies on worlds and world linking. 
And uh, we know this feature is going to have a huge impact on the player experience in World vs. World, and we want to work with our players, with you, to get this right. Oh. And this is really why we're going to be releasing it in a beta state in phases. This is going to allow us to get feedback on each element of that system before we make it a permanent addition I'm ready. to the game. Uh, we mentioned this we on go. July 2nd, but I want to reiterate, World vs. World is a core pillar for Guild Wars 2, <laughs> and we want to make sure that we delivered something meaty for the game mode, aside from let's, uh, uh, let's, let's see the evidence of that. <laughs> let's see the print. And this feature is just the first step of many that we have planned for getting World vs. World where we and you want first to be. First of many. All right, all right. Uh, now, Elias, like this is the like only it. major feature coming before the expansion. Like Colin mentioned before, he's scooping everything. Uh, <laughs> we, well, I guess we already talked about it publicly, but uh, we've also, we're working on um, upgrading the engine from uh, DirectX 9 to DirectX 11. Um, this is a long-awaited and highly requested update for Guild Wars 2. I think Ruby can attest <laughs> to that one. Uh, and it all starts with an opt-in beta later Where's this year. Where's my FPS? This changeover is critical for Oh, they're not going to give dates. And it allows Ooh. us to start ratcheting up our graphical fidelity which is a long-term effort that we're very excited about. You're going to get FPS back um, with the engine update, and then you're going to lose it when they make the graphics better. short months, and we'll be back yeah, in really. August, which is just a couple days away, to talk about those in... At least you'll have better graphics. <laughs> so they're back in August, like, so we're getting new info really soon. Uh, one final note for me. Uh, we do have four elite specialization beta events planned for End of Dragons. Ooh, the first four. three of these events will each include three of nine new Elite okay. Specializations. Ooh. The fourth Ooh. event is going to include all nine Elite Specializations and the Siege Turtle. Uh, you'll be able oh. to play with the existing Elite Specs, uh, sorry, you'll be able to play with the Elite Specs and Siege Turtles in existing PvE content, World yeah. World and in PvP. Wow, just PvP everywhere. Yeah, not just PvP this time, they're unleashing it. To everyone, even those who are on free-to-play accounts. Uh, now, the big beat here is that the first Elite Spec beta is just three weeks away, Ooh. starting on August 17th. What are we nice! August, August 17th. You'll be able to play with the virtual. It's now. Let's go. It's arm. now. And two more <laughs> oh to be revealed elite specializations. Mm -hmm. I'm right. A pump. Countdown towards those betas. We'll be revealing all of the remaining eight elite specs leading up to each of the betas. And speaking of, okay. there's a little sneak peek at the silhouette of the oh, next oh, necro pistol. Out very soon. Oh, 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 oh necro oh, pistol oh, boys. Oh, pistol oh, necro oh, boys. Oh, Interesting. Oh. Plague now, doctor. I, I feel like that's it, right? Nope. Like Ruby, do we have anything else that we want we to talk about? More today? things. Oh, um, <laughs> so so that's August seventh, hey. guys. That gets leaked. Uh, <clears throat> We've been working on this. I wonder if Arrain Rubik will think Dragon that's a spear. <laughs> and it is finally ready to share with all of you. <laughs> you him. can pre purchase this Got him. Oh, until yes. August 20th for delivery yeah, in yes. January of 2020. Aurene statue. We've also yes. partnered with DX Racer to give away a DX Racer Racing Series Pro Gaming Chair. Pro Gaming Chair. Uh, check out the news on yes, GuildWars2.com to see how to enter and how to pre purchase the Aurene statue. Ooh. All right. So surely DX that's Racer. everything. Now, We've covered now, the Merch, I have, we got I have everything more. done. Oh, Look, they're teasing. <laughs> there now there's a title. One thing that we've seen a lot of you asking about. Pre orders. Early in July, early this month, we told you, you that End of Dragons is coming in, yeah. quote, early 2022. Oh, date, date. And we've been watching all of you speculate about what early means. <clears throat> I am super excited to let you know that the expansion will launch in February. February. And you will be able to pre-purchase today at 11.20 oh, wow. a.m. Pacific time. Ooh, that is yeah. less than two hours away. Ooh. Um, to help pass the time Referral until, link, exclamation mark, GW2. I'm going to let you see the pre-purchase bonus items oh. and what you can get with each edition of Guild Wars 2 End of Dragons. The pre-purchase bonus items <clears throat> are the Flame Serpent Weapon Chest, the oh, Xingjie Mosaic cape, cape and the Prodigy of Xingjie title. You will get oh, all of those title, as yes. soon as you pre-purchase, so you can start showing off some Canton Flare in-game right away. Ooh. Every edition of End of Dragons has some great extras, so let's go ahead and talk about those too. Um, the standard edition of End of Dragons includes a free shared inventory slot and oh. the max level boost. The Deluxe Edition comes with those two items, plus an additional character slot, the Xingjie Dragon Boat Skiff Skin, a Canthan Raptor Skin, which I love, Ooh. and an Identity Repair Kit. And then the Ultimate Edition, which is the best value, includes ah, all of those items, plus 4,000 gems to spend. It's a big cake. Yeah, you guys, when you that use my lot, referral guys, link, be sure to get <laughs> yeah, the Ultimate. Yeah, hit that Ultimate, yeah, it's definitely the hit the value. Ultimate, guys. Yeah, 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 100%, yeah, hit the Ultimate, boys. For everything else we're gonna show this year. 
Yeah, um, the, the, the gems are free. Looking forward yeah, to they're the free. Next <laughs> elite spec the next elite specialization and the first beta event coming in August, which I think August begins technically this week. <laughs> it's, it's, that is very true. <laughs> yeah. You know, one, one note I want to add in. Uh, so you mentioned the identity repair kit that'll be available. Yeah. Uh, there are going to be Ooh. some new looks with the expansion. That players you can you can, can make the uh, anime girl, girl of your dreams. Yep. Is that what they're <laughs> that's saying? Good timing for that. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Um, yeah. So uh, the don't forget to check out Living World season Big three, eyes. episode five, which again is going to be free all week. We also have the World Boss Rush event starting today, and uh, the World vs. World Bonus Experience Week is actually active running until Friday of this week. And you can start pre-purchasing End of Dragons at 11.20 a.m. Pacific Let's time go. today. Go pick it up. Go in-game and show off your cool flair. Buy uh, the thanks expansion. Us, everybody. Thank yeah, you thanks, everybody. all for joining us. Oh, that's it. Okay. Thanks, we'll see you again. All right. Nice. Okay. Now they're going to show the trailer again, I guess. Yeah, trailer is going around again. Wow. Okay. 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 There's... Familiarity so, in how are we feeling about that, boys? What are we, what are we thinking here? I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with what, with what they showed. Yeah. I wish they had given us a little bit more look at the legendaries. Like, I mean, if they're all going to be the same theme, there was no reason. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if they're all going to look similar, they might as well show us like four uh, uh, of them. Because like, what difference does it make? The legend. I'm thinking that. I think the legendaries maybe they. They made the same concept for all of them, mm. and they decided to make that one the great sword, and then the rest, the rest will be different. Yeah, I, don't think I, so. I think they, I think they're all going to be the same. Actually, that's the thing. Mm. I'm like, I hate to be negative, but yeah. like, they look sort of like a gem, like maybe not even a gem store skin, but Ooh. with like a, a really nice effect. Like the the aura yeah, the that you get is the effect is sick, but like the skin itself is like somewhat underwhelming. Yeah, that is a little underwhelming. I mean, I would like to have seen more about the elite specs, though. I, I didn't expect to see, like, full-on gameplay, though, with, like, mechanics. And I like the idea that they're not going to be afraid to, like, break it a little bit, you know? And and I've got to say, actually, yeah. that Mesmer one, the Mesmer one didn't actually look completely ludicrous, right? Like, it looked kind of like, okay... You know, obviously, it looked, it's looked. it got some big numbers on it right now, but big numbers, you can work around it, right? Like, it didn't look game-breaking, and I really hope they maintain that across the board. I think... Yeah, I've got to say, I think I'm feeling pretty confident in the expansion. Um, say, say about the legendaries. I'm, I'm super interested about the, the way the mastery is, right? Like, the mastery is very interesting to me, actually, because it looks like they're not going to do, like, this is like a one thing, right? Because obviously with Pathfinder, you had just mounts, right? HT, it was like a bunch of different ones. So it's more like HOT in that you've got loads of different masteries instead, as opposed to just like one, you know, one core concept. It's going to be a lot of different things there. Uh, so you've got the, you know, mounts are still going there. Mount skins are big money, guys. Okay, oh, here we have price here as well. Standard edition is 30 bucks. I think these are the normal prices right yeah and you know i know i know it's a bit of a meme guys but it actually is true um oh that's a nice piece of content isn't it like a giant fish dragon see look at the fins guys fish dragon check that out uh, i know it's a bit of a meme but the ultimate edition if you care about the gems actually is pretty good value right like um if you do care about gems then you might as well buy the ultimate um but there you go uh that Man, is the, the, the yeah the dude. fact that they they want to reuse assets from the story to make strikes and they get a cm on top of that Ooh, that's big yes what did they say about the old strikes getting CMs? Did they say that? They didn't, they didn't say, say anything. Old, no, they but didn't say I wouldn't that. be surprised if they go back and maybe oh no, I don't remove know. mechanics to make an easier mode or odd stuff, right? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure about that one. Um, I but mean, maybe no, not now. Yeah, I, I. But that is very interesting, actually. Like, I think there's a lot. There was a lot of really good stuff there. I think the big, the big headline for me. Oh, they did say the old strikes are going to get CMs. They confirmed that. Okay. Wait, oh, really? I thought they said updated rewards. I thought they didn't. I didn't know realize they said CMs. Yeah, they're reworking the strike mission system. That's what they yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, they didn't. I didn't think they said about like new. Um, yeah, I didn't say this in yours. But yeah, okay. There might be like uh, an aerodrome for strikes. That, oh, I guess. I mean, besides the Eye of the North, but yeah, the North is yeah. a mess, honestly. So this to me is super interesting. Okay, I I think there's a lot of pretty spicy stuff going on here. I think. Um, uh, I think the elite specs looking good here. I'm really excited to see if they're just gonna like kill life force. That's big. Strikes getting CMs. Strikes are the new raids, guys. Like this is basically what it's gonna be by the looks of that. Challenge modes. And look, they said they're gonna be challenging. They better been telling the truth. I want to see some brutards there. And look, guys, hello. Okay, wait, I really want all this, guys, because everyone's like, oh, raids are dead. Team, do you guys know what this is? The expansion is launching with this. Yes, they actually said that um, strikes but will. They, the, the, the challenge are, modes will be a little bit yeah, later. Yeah, a little bit delayed. Yeah, that basically it's But that's good not, because like you can play through that it, means right? that they're yeah. well, it also means that they're thinking 
they're taking progression yeah, into yeah. account. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Like they don't want you to have to go fuck the story. I want to pr- do exactly strike yeah. progression. I want worlds first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so they, they're going to gonna like, do that later. Yeah, this is very big, right? Very, very big. For the first time ever, guys, the expansion is essentially going to launch a few days after, maybe like a week or something like that. You'll be launching with Endgame, right? Big Endgame will be kicking in. Fully revamped reward system there as well. I have got to say, I I, I mean, I, I suppose I was maybe expecting a little bit more of it. And I have to say, you know what? I don't want to be too much of a downer. I'll kind of give it like a brief over here. Ah, the, the mastery to me is pretty meh, but it was going to be pretty meh no matter what, right? Fishing, whatever, right? It, it's fine. And I, the, the one thing that does bother me a little bit is like this jade technology thing they're talking about. I'm really scared they're going to kind of ice brood saga the mastery. I think stuff like the way station is just like, it's so imbalanced, right? It's so overpowered. And I really hope they don't power creep open world um, with stuff like the siege turtle. I don't want to be, I don't want open world to be optimal using these mounts, using these masteries. I want to actually play the game when I'm doing stuff like open world. And one thing, actually, I was... I was oh, my God. Yeah, what's up? I just had a thought. So the data mine henchman thing, mm-hmm. what if one of the masteries oh, is similar to the table where the, oh, and no. the those strings that were like, bring a warrior ally to fight by your side is oh. like what that, like what the way station do, like says or does. No way. And it, ooh. That's like, it's, it almost <laughs> makes too much sense. Yeah, I, I do kind of like the idea of making the, the new masteries kind of relevant everywhere, but I think the problem is with, with the masteries being relevant everywhere, right, is that the content ends up being so layered, right? It's incredibly, you know, you keep layering these systems on top of each other, and I think that's a really big concern in my opinion. Like, if you do that, it's kind of like, eh you end up with just so many systems working in tandem that they end, you know, that it's just too much and incredibly complicated. Although I do think that I'm, I'm sure they know what they're doing, right? You know, you got to give a little bit of, little bit of, a little bit of a grace to a reading it there as well. Uh, the guild all thing is super interesting. Like the fact that they're adding a guild, what do you guys think about that? Like the fact that they're even adding it, that is an yeah, interesting I mean, thing. I think it's the minimum expected, you know? Yeah, but I mean, what worries me is that they didn't mention any sim. They didn't say, oh yeah, you can do Guildhall level 100 now. We're adding new upgrades. We're adding new features. Yeah, it just seems like it's just Guildhall a- and hey, here you go. Like kind of token, token Guild. It's a very nice Guildhall. I think I'll probably go for it. Maybe they'll mention it later right. on. It, it is sad that Guildhalls don't get updates. I agree. I would like to see more stuff. Like, even increased player uh, cap. You know, that'd be yeah, yeah, nice they could, yeah, they could <laughs> fix the goddamn Guildhall system, right? That would be pretty nice. But, you know, I, I like that they kind of have, you know, guilds at least, you know, in mind, right? They're thinking about guilds. Hopefully we could see some guild features added at some point and maybe some reworks there of guild halls and that sort of stuff would be pretty nice, I guess, at some point. Um, I don't know, like, what, what else is going on there? I mean, I, I was kind of hoping to see some, like, open world event footage, but I guess they were concerned about spoilers, right? So I, I think that makes sense, right? That, that kind of makes a lot of sense. It makes sense. Well, we know one of the maps is the Equivold Forest because they showed like a ton of footage of Equivold stuff. Why? Why do you think they didn't say how many maps? Because they said how they said that there were two more masteries that we, ha- we haven't seen, right? So we know that two ma- that one mastery is fishing, one mastery is siege turtles. Or wait, did they say five masteries or four? Is it like at least two or three more? I think, right? Why didn't they didn't say how many maps there were? Do you think it's like five hmm. maps, and, or, or they're just not really going with it? Yeah, I have no idea. Hmm. One per map would be weird, but yeah, I guess it would kind of make sense. It seems kind of arbitrary, but yeah. yeah. All right. Hopefully, they figured out a good way to integrate the masteries with the like gameplay of the map. Mm. Yeah. It's not like exalted assistance thing that no one used. Yeah. I mean, I was I was looking at something during the entire event, like all the all the things they were showing. They were actual screenshots, like all of them. Mm. And they, like, the details on the textures on the ground, the grass, the leaves and stuff, if you look really up close in the game right now, some of them look a little bit washed out, but those seem to look pretty good. So I think that they were using, you know, the updated uh, 
Yeah, I think they started to leverage. Graphics. Yeah, I think they're going to leverage the power of DX11, right, in the expansion for sure. Right, they're going to try and yeah. make the game look even prettier because, of course, when you when it you looks have really new, good. Yeah, yeah, it, it looked it looked pretty contrasty, but I think that might just be like the way they they like it, right? It's like very like the colors are very striking. Right? Like, I like. I think it's just that map specifically, like the Canter map yeah. with all the green and pink and stuff. Yeah, it's very intense, like very intense. I'm I'm curious how that will actually look in game because that that might be that's probably with post processing on, right? And I don't really I don't run the game with yeah, post processing yeah. on, so that's probably where it kind of is different there. I, oh yeah, I have to say, this is one of the things I think people are going to sleep on a lot. I actually really like what they're doing with open world mob design. I actually think that sounds super cool. So if you have a veteran, a champion, right? These mobs actually have new skills. They use different abilities. I actually really like that a lot. I think there's a lot of potential for making open world a lot more interesting when these um, these monsters have like different abilities. So it's it's kind of familiar, but different, right? You know, you, they're all going to have like the lower level abilities, but they actually level up as you get more things. I think that is super cool, actually. I like the sound of that a lot. Um, and it it does actually sound it really does sound like the design principles they have are very solid with the expansion. It's going to be okay. Uh, you know, we have this idea that we're going to focus on replayability. Uh, we're focusing on making the content. You know, engaging like reusing these assets into strike missions, releasing with any no, look. And I, I don't want to be overly optimistic here, guys. But bear in mind, there's a lot of story bosses um, in in something like Path of Fire. You could be looking at like five plus strikes that come out on launch and that have five CMs. That's like a, f that's over a full raid wing, assuming the bosses are actually, you know, kind of like, you know, a raid tier, right? Like around that raid tier. And I really hope they are. Like, I would love to see that. I would really, really like to see um, they actually make them properly hard. Now, the question is, right? Like the real question is, is how, how difficult are they going to be? Right? Uh, and like, what is going to be the level of intensity? Like, is there going to be a replacement for raids, essentially? Because obviously, strikes are kind of not as hard as raids, so the CM might be like the same as a normal mode. Is there going to be like another extreme replacement? Are they still thinking about raids? Are they thinking about CM, CM? Are they going to make some very challenging well, um, things here? So, what do you guys think? I think the strike CM will be raid level challenging. I don't think it'll be raid CM level. Yeah. I think it'll be raid same. level. Um, and the idea. I think if if they weren't going to be at least that level, they wouldn't bother putting a lockout on it. You know what I mean? Like mm. they would just they would just let you do it from minute one. But they want people to go through progression, at least like normal raid progression. So I don't I don't think they're done with uh, like they didn't say they're done with raids. They might if they are done with raids, they didn't say it in this announcement. It was maybe not to ruin the show, I guess. Mm. But yeah, they, I I still don't think they're done with raids until they say nah. that they're done i mean they won't I, be done but i mean suppose like, yeah suppose call, that call it are. strikes call it raids call yeah. it whatever you want yeah, yeah. if it's good content and it's actually hard who cares what the name is right? it's doable it's definitely doable right look look at these copiums are you seeing these copiums in the chat i mean i i think that strikes yeah. replacing raids could be good I, I hope they do still do like more linked up things because i think there is something to be said for having that very immersive atmosphere as opposed to just having a boss in an arena and fighting it right uh, I, th I think that's good, and if that allows them to get more throughput, that's great, right? But I think also, I think I would really like to see some more story-driven stuff there as well, where you actually have multiple bosses, you actually have, you know, the in-between things there, at least, you know, some kind of raid content um, would be really good. But hopefully these strikes might kind of get the community a bit more engaged.